Um, I want to do a video on how to colorize photos using Corel Paint Shop Pro version 9. Um, you'll have to bear with me a little bit possibly because this is my first time using this program. I, I colorized this photo once just so I could uh, practice everything that, that I wanted to do for the video. Uh, but I know we have some people using this program and, and I don't believe we have any videos for it. So I wanted to make one. This is not going to be a quick video. It's pretty detailed and uh, we'll just see how long it lasts. Um, but I will go hopefully faster than the last video I made. Um, hopefully you know that, that you can open your, your file. Um, just file open and then navigate to wherever your photo is and open it. And um, I make sure you're in the edit tab. Ooh, and it zoomed out on me. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do with this photo, even though some people may consider it black and white, it actually is not. It's shades of brown. Uh, so we need to remove any color. And if you know a better way to do this, feel free. But the way I found is go to adjust hue and saturation and then hue saturation lightness and then take the saturation lever all the way down to minus 100%. And that should remove all of the color. And you need to do that so that any color you lay on top won't interact with that brown that was under there. Um, so and then maybe we need to make just a few small fixes. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. So you've got the clone tool, scratch remover, and object remover. Uh, scratch remover, I think works, it wants to do like a straight line. And it looks like the center box is there. That's what you want to have replaced. And the two smaller shapes on the side is what it's gonna replace it with. Um, it, it, it's really meant for just a straight scratch. It's not made to do something round like I just did. Um, but it worked for that particular spot so I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, you also have a uh, clone tool and this you right click to select the source and then you go to where this uh, the blotch is and you left click to replace it with that source. And then you want to choose a new source periodically. You don't want to, like this is very lightly colored, you don't want to come over here and make a blob like that. So you always want to choose your source very close to what you're wanting to fix. And my brush is a little large, you could turn the size down and get a little bit more accurate um, source for repairing. So thankfully there's not very much on here to repair. So I'm going to move on from there. Um, <clears throat> paintbrush. Uh, I just use the regular paintbrush. Um, it looks like there's some different default brushes and you could probably download some collections. I'm not going to go into all that. I just want to show you how to colorize. Um, you can set your size of your brush here. The hardness, I would turn all the way down to zero. Density, thickness, I would keep those at 100%. At blend mode, keep it at normal. And I had Smart Edge checked, but I don't know if it did a whole lot for this photo. Um, one step that I skipped, let me go back. We want to set our levels on here because it's, it's a little bit, there's not quite enough contrast in this photo. It's a little washed out. So let's go to adjust brightness and contrast and down here to levels. And here we have our histogram that we're used to seeing. And this was actually like this originally. It looks like it saved uh, my last change. Um, and as you can see, this is the dark end. This is the light end and your midtones. I usually don't mess with midtones. 
Um, but all your blacks, you don't have any blacks because your histogram begins right here and that's not quite black. You also don't have any whites in this photo um, because the histogram begins here on the whites. So we take the black slider and move it over to right where the histogram begins to go up and then take the white slider to right where it comes back down. And that will set your levels. So this is the before and the after. You can see it makes quite a bit of a difference. Um, we'll go undo and redo. It uh, really makes the photo much sharper, um, have much more contrast, and that's what you need to get a good, good coloring. Okay, back to coloring. Showed you the brush. Um, the eraser, I use it quite a bit, and it's the same thing. I did keep the hardness at about 50% on that. Uh, it seemed like it was a little too soft on the 100, but you could play with that. I keep um, density, thickness, opacity, I keep that all at 100, except sometimes I do want to just erase like 50% and I'll turn the opacity down, but I never messed with density and thickness. I, I left those at 100. And I'm not sure what step is yet. Um, like I said, I'm just learning this program, just trying to figure it out. So when you're colorizing, you never want to color on your original background. Uh, you want to have a new layer. And right here, this very first one, it looks like a sheet of paper. If you click on that and choose New Raster Layer, and you can name this, say I'm going to paint his skin. So I can just name it, and it might be a good idea for you to do that until you get used to what you're doing. Um, so that you can find your layers in case you want to make adjustments. Uh, so we'll, we'll change the blend mode here to soft light. Keep the opacity, everything else, just keep it where it is. Click OK. And now you want to choose a color. And I went through, like I said, I've done this already, so I'm just going to punch in my numbers here. This was F to CEB4. This was the first color I used um, for colorizing his skin. And I have a tendency to use a fairly large brush. I'm going to use a small one right here around his eye and eyebrow. Um, I have a tendency to use as big of a brush as I can because I get tired of fiddling around with little small brushes. But you use whatever is comfortable for you. And I'm going to color all the way up in that shadow there. And I'm going to overlap his beard and mustache just slightly. You don't want it too much, but you do want a little bit of overlap to help the two blend together. Don't want any sharp edges. And there. ears okay and I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out and also if you hold down the alt key and drag your mouse down it'll make your brush larger and if you drag up, it would make it smaller. So that might be a faster way if, if you're used to using shortcut keys um, to resize your brush instead of going up here and clicking these little arrows. I'm not used to using shortcut keys, but I'm going to try it this time. I may forget to do it, though. Okay, 
Now I think I have all his skin colored in and if you want to double check you can turn this to normal. Ooh, and you can see I missed a lot of spots. Turn it to normal and then you can fill in anything that you missed. I like coloring on soft light though because I can kind of see how things are overlapping. Um, and then I'm going to set that back to soft light. Okay, now I will make a new raster layer. And you want a new layer every time you change, um, every time you change color or if you change like an area that you're coloring, even if it's the same color, you want to use a new layer. That way you can make adjustments to that individual thing without affecting anything else. So we always want to do bunches of layers. Um, again, set this to soft light. Click OK. And now I'm going to do a second layer of skin color. And that's, I've also already chosen that color. And that's 592E0F. So this is kind of an orangey, warm orangey brown. Um, and I will go over everything I just did with this color. Now, every photo is different, so you're not always going to get the same results with the same colors. Uh, but if I kind of follow, I, I just kind of follow this formula of using a lighter peachy color for the base and then an orangey brown for the second coat. And then I just adjust the opacity to get the color I want. If, if I was doing someone that, that was, say, olive skin, I may cut back on the peachiness um, or the warm brownness and make it a little more cool. Um, possibly I may want to make the skin a little more yellowish. Uh, but I just get really good luck with these this combination of colors, like a peachy um, color and then a warm orangey brown. And whoop, figuring out that shortcut is just different for me. I went over there a little bit. I have no idea why it did that. That looks weird. Okay. Okay, and then I will play with the opacity on this this color, this layer, um, and even maybe on the skin layer. Turn them up and down until you get a pleasing combination, um, a good result. And every photo is different. So my, my base coat, I wound up at 100%, and then the second coat, 59, 60. And I'm, I can even go back later and adjust that. That's why you keep everything on separate layers. Um, okay, now new raster layer. And this one I'm going to use um, to give him some rosiness. I always just call it blush, even though it's, it's not really blush. Uh, change it to soft light and my color for this was B51A00 so it's kind of an orangey color um, I'm going to add this to his cheeks. And see this side, it went a lot darker than this side because this side is in the shadows. Uh, so I'm probably, that's where I'm going to use my 50% eraser. In fact, I don't want it up here on his eye bags either. Erase that at 100%. Um, now I am going to turn this down 
until, and I'm going to focus on this side because that one I already know is going to be a little darker than I want. So I'm going to get this one the way I want it. And I kind of like it right about 42, 40, somewhere right around in there. I kind of like it there. And then I'm going to take my eraser and turn the opacity down about 50% and just lighten this side over here. So I just think that was too much. And then put that back on 100 so I don't forget later. And I'm going to add a new raster layer. And I forgot to change it to soft light. So I can easily do that from here. Just click on normal, change that to soft light. Um, and then I'm going to go down here and just add that same color to his lip. And then adjust the opacity on that. And I did that separate from his cheeks, even though it's the same color, because I want to be able to have a different opacity there. And I think I may have gotten into his beard a little bit, his mustache. I'll go back down here to his skin. Yeah, looks like his mustache is lapping over his mouth a little bit right there. Okay, and I think I am going to add me new a new raster layer. Um, I'm just going to call this one nose. I'm going to add a little bit of redness to his nose. It looks like um, between possibly drinking and getting out in the weather that maybe he should have a little bit of a red nose. Just a little. Let's give it a little color. I'm going to erase that back just a little bit. Keep it on the end. Okay. New raster layer. And face shading. Change it to soft light. And my color for this is 221E14. And this I'm going to add places where you would expect to see shadows in, in the eye socket and right along this crease uh, where his eyelashes are. This side of his face, the entire side of his face is in shadow and up underneath the hat brim. So I am going to color over all of that, including that eyebrow and his eye. This entire side of his face is in the shade. Maybe even a little bit on that left side of his mouth to his ear. A little bit right here on the inside of his ear. Not the entire ear, just, just the parts that would be shaded. Okay. And then I might turn that down just a little bit. That might be a little, little too much shadow. There we go. So that's 75%. Um, I need to come down here on his hand, I think, maybe, and add a little bit of a shadow right here between his thumb and forefinger, just to kind of separate the two. Maybe a little bit here between his fingers and his knuckles. I'm not sure if I like it there on his knuckles. I might erase that. Okay. Uh, next. Sometimes people, men in particular, have just a little bit of green in their faces. Um, it just depends on how much you want to do. If you want to you know, get really detailed, just trying to show you some different options. This is 1A210F. It's just a um, desaturated dark green. And um, I'm just going to put this right here under his eyes. And 
then I'm going to turn that down quite a bit. Just want to give, introduce a little bit of variety. You want to keep this kind of in the shadows and, and maybe the bags of his eyes just to give him a little bit of color. And there's a little shadow here in the crease of his cheek. You can add a little green there. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, new raster layer. And I'm going to do his eyes. Change it to soft light. And the color I picked here, I was trying to find something kind of an icy blue. So 01B9D1. And I have to make my brush real small. And then I probably turn the opacity down on that because I want them to be kind of just ice blue. Okay, new raster layer. Um, not iris. Pupil. Soft light. And just gonna pick black. One of the few times that I actually use black is for the pupils. And I'll use it like I'm going to use it on the leather uh, on the bill of his hat. Um, I don't use black a whole lot, but I, I will use it on certain things. Um, new layer, and I'm just going to call this highlight. And again, I forgot to change it to soft light, so I'll change it over here. And I'm just going to pick this white and just, just kind of make sure that highlight is white. Okay. New raster layer. And what are we going to do now? Okay, let me do waterline. I know I'm getting very detailed here. But I made a really detailed video for Photoshop, so I wanted to try to do something similar for uh, Paint Shop Pro. So this is B92D5D. Kind of a mauve color. Uh, and this is for the waterline and the tear duct. And then we will definitely turn the opacity down on that. Just barely want to see it. Okay. I think that looks good. Okay, and maybe I work on the beard a little bit. Um, And I'm going to get just this off black. I'm not going to use the, the uh, pure black. And I'm um, going to go over his beard with the black. And see soft light, it kind of clings to the uh, shadows. And I just want to emphasize the black in his beard. And I probably won't keep that at 100%, but I'm going to leave that there for the moment and get a new layer. Um, beard 2, I guess. Um, just a soft light. I, I don't usually name my layers, but I'm trying to do that for you just so you can see what I'm doing. And then I just chose this, the, the plain white. And I'm just going to brush that over the brightest areas and just kind of bring out the highlights in his hair and beard. 
And then I do believe I'm going to turn the black down a little bit. It's a little much. And I'll turn down the white. Because I really don't want to affect these shaded areas, these shadowed areas. I just want to make those white hairs sparkle a little bit. And I forgot to do his eyebrows. So let me get my off black. Just run that over his eyebrows. And I, I periodically I zoom out and see how things are looking so I can sometimes I get so focused on one little area that I forget the rest of the photo. And okay. Um new raster layer and I guess I'll do his suit next. His uniform. And I don't know what who I don't know what this uniform is. I did not do any research for it. So if I'm picking the wrong colors, um, you'll have to forgive me. I'm just, but I'm not going to do research for this particular photo. Um, just want to get this video made. I liked this color when I had it earlier, so that's good enough. It looks like a vintage color. On this particular one, I'm just coloring right over those fleur de lis. I don't know what color they should be. I thought about maybe making them a gold color, but I thought that might look kind of odd, so I just color right over them. And I'm just going to say they're white. Okay, and then I'm going to get my eraser and just erase it off these buttons. To me, it's easier to color over them and then erase it back. That may seem backwards, but that's the way I always do it. I'm going to try to get inside this little badge. Okay, good enough. One thing I did learn, uh, Photoshop does the same thing, but see like this um, border, this is a straight line. If you click here and then hold down the shift key and click here, it will make a straight line for you. If you click in a straight line, it's probably because my hardness is at 50%, turn it up. So click here, click here. Yeah, that was what was wrong. And that will, um, that way you don't have to freehand a straight line. Which I cannot do. Not with a mouse at least. There you go. Getting close. All right, new raster layer. And Bill. And this one I am going to use the, the 
full black. See, my brush is too small. It acts weird. Either that or I'm getting shaky. And a lot of times when I have a, a really shiny area like on the brim of this hat, uh, just like I did for the eyes, I'll get a white and um, emphasize that, that highlight with some white. Just make it pop out a little bit more. Okay. For his buttons, he used A77600. I just go over the buttons. And I think I'm going to leave the chain kind of silvery. That way it stands out separate from the buttons. For the wall, I used FFB3F. That's not right. I must have written that down wrong because that's not the color I used. FFB3F. FFB3F. Yeah, that's not the color I used. I used something closer to this yellow color. Um, so I'm just going to hand pick something here. It's kind of a golden yellow there. And then um, I'll go over this wall and then I will turn the opacity down so it's kind of a just an off more of an off-white. It's kind of a tan color by the time I turn the opacity down. But I like using the yellow because I can see where it's going. I'll just turn that down. So it's just kind of a tan. And, um, I see a boo-boo here on his suit. go and I don't know I've been trying with this beard I've tried different colors I don't particularly like the black and white he looks like a redhead to me but I can't seem to find a color to, to make that work but I don't know I'll play with it some more maybe I can come up with something and um, so this is how I would use Paint Shop Pro version 9 in order to colorize a photo. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask and, and it, you know we'll figure out what the answer is. We'll study it up and get back with you if we have to. 
Um, the last thing you would, of course, want to do is um, uh, merge your layers if you want to save it as a JPEG. Uh, otherwise, you would save it. I think it's called PP. Let's see what it's called. I guess it would be like a PSD file in order to save all your layers. We'll just try that and see what happens. Looks like that's going to work. Um, you would just save it as a PSD file and that way you would have all your layers. But in order to upload it to the internet, you have to save it as a JPEG. And when you do that, just a regular JPEG, not that JPEG 2000, whatever that is, uh, you can change your quality here on the slider. Um, the better the quality, the, the bigger the file. And f Facebook, uh, actually all of the internet pretty much, reduces your photos to 72 dpi anyway, so there's no point in saving best quality. Uh, but I would say right around here, if this was, uh, looks like that's 20, um, and then save it, you know, go to wherever you want to save it, and you can, um, I usually put some word in here, colorized, color, copy, no, the numeral 2, just something to keep it separate from the original, and that way I still have the original one. Um, click save. Uh, because the limitations, it's going to um, merge all these layers. Um, would you like to continue? Yes, you'd like to continue. And then you'll have it saved, and then you can upload it from there. Um, anyway, I hope this is helpful, and if you have any questions, please let us know, and we'll do our best to help you. Thank you.